Hello, and welcome to this review for Reaper Miniatures Bones 5 Kickstarter Expansion Set Daimyo. This is the third video in this Kickstarter review series thus far. If you'd like to see the review of the core set and the Dungeon Dwellers Expansion Set, you can click the cards in the top right corner or check out the Bones 5 playlist on my channel. If you're interested in acquiring any of the figures you see here today, you have a limited time to do so. Scan the QR code on the screen or visit reapermini.com for more details. Daimyo, an assortment of fantasy miniatures based on Japanese mythology for $50. I must admit, I'm not very familiar with the subject, so I can't reasonably rate this on accuracy, so I will stick to my general scoring as mentioned in previous videos. Of the expansion sets that I picked, this had the second highest cost per mini at roughly $1.47 each, and has fewer minis included than most other expansion sets that I picked up, only having more than one other. So grab your favorite Japanese snack, sit back and relax as we take a look at these brand new minis. We start things off with a little bit of terrain. We have an archway and a few shrines. This terrain will go particularly well with the yokai add-on which has its own small terrain piece. We'll be reviewing that set in a separate video. This little collection sets the scene for the set going forward and is probably the best little group of minis to paint first from this collection as you can work out your color scheme here before attending to the rest of the minis. You know we had to start with the goblins first. These goblin ninjas or monks are more proportionally aligned with Reaper's newer goblin figures than the ones we've seen in previous sets. They're pretty wacky looking. As a troop, I feel like these guys would make a very interesting encounter. I really like this leaping one, though his little sword there is really prone to bending. So I'm going to have to do the hot water ice bath technique on that one. Because when he's laid flat, he looks like he's about to face plant. You know, I know these aren't turtles, but you really could do a TMNT type thing with these four. I mean, there are four of them, and they all have their own distinct weaponry, it looks like. I'm just saying. Next, we have our first samurai, a trio of orcs, or half-orcs. I know there's a specific name for those glaive-type weapons that two of these are holding. I believe these are meant to be called naginatas. That's my horrible butchering pronunciation. But I'm no expert on Japanese weaponry and these are fantasy miniatures, so it's possible they were just freestyling these things. The war banners on the back, though, are a very historical thing. Those are called Sashimono. And you can see those on the backs of samurai or their common soldiers, the Ashigaru, the name of which I did actually know. Thank you, Total War. These present an excellent freehand painting opportunity, as they are essentially double-sided blank canvases to practice symbology on. Maybe some flag experts out there can do some really neat things with these. I'm not one of those, so I'm probably going to have to just look up a few designs and see what I can eke out of them. Alright, now we've come to this guy. I overall really like this figure, except for one part. His hands. What's going on with them? They look like they're two sizes too large. It's like this guy was the Grinch, 
saving Christmas, but instead of his heart growing, it was his hands. What's what's the deal? I know there's supposed to be two hands holding this sword, but I don't know. It just looks a little weird to me. Maybe I'm I'm out of pocket, but some some just don't look right with that one. No aid to the sculptor. They did an excellent job with all these. That just seems like a little bit of an oops to me. Samurai dinosaurs. What a cool thing to say. Actually, only a few of these miniatures are depicted as samurai, and one of them isn't a dinosaur, technically. But still, these actually make up a large portion of this expansion set, which is fine by me. This is my jam right here. I already picked up all the dino folk from Reaper's previous Kickstarter. I snagged these, and I picked up the Fantasy Dinos add-on, which we will also be covering in a future review. Can you tell that I was a dinosaur kid? Anyway, let's talk about these guys. The Skywing Ninja. A pteranodon wearing a face mask. This is really funny to me. Like, you have a giant beak. But, hey, at least you're covering your nostrils unlike that goblin from the core set. The mask goes over your nose. Anyway, we also got a couple of armor backs. Re ankylosaurs or ankylosaurs if you want to be very correct on the pronunciation you got one made up as a sumo wrestler which seems fitting as these guys would be quite heavy the other appears to be a spear ashigaru with one of the war banners on its back weird thing about that there isn't any strap keeping it there it's just kind of nailed to its back now I wonder if ankylosaur shells are anything like turtle shells, because if so, that would definitely hurt. See, turtles can feel through their shells. It's just an extension of their spine. This is why turtles and tortoises love scratches on their shells. My favorite thing about that figure, though, has to be the base. It's the only one like it in the set. Granted, all of the figures have unique bases, but I just really like the look of this one. It reminds me of a sandy rock garden. A Triceratops Samurai. I repeat, a Triceratops Samurai. I, I, is this really cool? Technically, they call these Thunderfoots. Thunderfeets? Whatever. The base of this one appears to be some kind of temple grounds. There's a little lantern that slots in in the hole there. I've left it unglued so far just because it would be difficult to paint otherwise. The Kabuto has been altered to fit this creature's head shape, and it honestly just makes sense. The antlers are moved to the horn area, and the crest covers the Triceratopsid's frill. Also, I'm not an expert, but I know this is a very specific stance it's in, as it's in the ready-to-draw sword, the one leg forward. It is pretty historically accurate. I mean, as much as a Triceratops samurai can be, I guess. This Parasaurolophus, aka Bloodcrest, wow, that's a lot darker of a name, is holding a Yumi bow, which is basically an asymmetrical Japanese longbow made from bamboo. Despite being a dinosaur person, this figure really captures the historical look of someone wielding this in the stance and the apparel, general shape of the bow. Someone at Reaper has clearly done their research. The base here is also something of note. It looks like they're staying on some sort of lotus tile, but the figure covers up the center and is single form, so we'll never know. Finally, we have a Tyrannosaurid, a black tooth, wielding, dual wielding, katanas. Dual wielding katanas isn't really something anybody did as the swords are heavy and require a lot of strength just to hold with one hand. But I feel like that rule probably doesn't apply to a tyrannosaur person. It's actually a really hard choice between this one and the trike of which one I like more. They both look great, but I do think the triceratopsid wins this matchup. Just has a more iconic pose, and a little more form-fitted for his costume. 
As we wrap up this section, I just want to note one last thing. All the dinos are a bit smaller than Reaper's previously released versions of them. Which isn't a bad thing or a big deal. Not all humans are the same height either. But I want to bring it up just now because we'll be seeing an even more drastic height difference in a later video review. And I'm going to be bringing this back up then. But for now, I'm just left wondering how I'm going to work a dinosaur samurai into my next D&D campaign because it'd be a real shame to not be able to use these excellent minis. Honor beyond death. Ooh, I gotta write that down. Yep, we got ourselves some skeletal samurai. This first one is actually perhaps the figure that started it all as this is the one and only recast in the entire daimyo set. Like the little tie on his back and the other samurai bags kinda looks like a skull. And I appreciate the three of these standing ones are not all just clones of each other. As skeletons I imagine that'd be pretty easy to end up doing. But each have something different. Whether that's you know, a bit of a broken helmet, a hole in their armor, or indeed a completely different weapon, or two weapons, as opposed to one. Speaking of different, this sure is that. We have here a multi-limbed samurai spirit of some sort. I don't know if this is meant to represent a specific thing, or it's just some concoction of Reaper's own making. When you get your hands on him, I recommend not gluing it together before painting, unlike me. I can reach all the spots just fine, but I think it'll be harder on me now just based on how much is going on here. There's just so many blades. Finally, we have this skeletal samurai on his undead horse. This is actually one of my favorite minis in the whole set, and I'm not entirely sure why. Maybe it's the pose of the samurai on top, or the trot of the horse underneath. Or maybe because it's actually two minis. Yeah, that's right. If you don't glue the samurai down, you get a zombie horse mount. For any of your zombie horse mount occasions. It'll have that weird block, but whatever. Who cares? Maybe that's just a weird saddle. I don't know. The samurai itself does seem maybe like it might be a little small if you were to put it next to the other guys, but once it's on top of the horse, there's really no telling the difference. All in all, it's a good selection of skeletal samurai. It would have been nice to see a few non-skeletal samurai in this set. Non-skeletal and non-human. -non but perhaps that's for a future Bones project. Next, we have this trio of ladies. One is a demon, succubus type person with a kind of a long neck dressed up in a samurai armor. Her wings are very veiny. I'm not personally super impressed by this one of the three. This harpy is much more impressive in my opinion. She's on a very precarious base just as the cloak here comes down. So definitely want to glue this on its own platform. It's really nice detail on the wings and the gown that sort of flowing down. And it's a really different look on sort of harpy type figure. This could even, I guess, represent some kind of angel. I don't know if it's meant to be another specific mythological creature from Japanese folklore. On that, I'm afraid I'm not an expert. And last, but certainly not least, we have what I can only describe as a nightmare. I don't know what this is, and I'm not sure I want to know what this is. It's some really creepy spider lady with like mannequin legs coming out of her back it's weird it's creepy 
It's also very cool, and I imagine it'll be a lot of fun to paint. Also, with the weird limbs, you'd think gluing this together would be difficult, but it, it was actually really easy. It just required a little bit of maneuvering. I imagine if these pieces are warped, though, that will be a bit of a hassle. If collecting Yu-Gi-Oh cards as a kid taught me anything, it's that the Dark Magician is objectively not as powerful as the Blue Eyes White Dragon. But it also taught me these elemental symbols that you can see on all these models. I feel like some might be a little disappointed that the fire, air, and water spirits are not cast in clear, but personally I find clear minis to be a little overrated, especially when you remember that a lot of clear resin eventually all yellow in time. I'm not, I'm not blown away by these three either. That's more where I would kind of be a little more disappointed. They're cool. They're, they're fine. This fire samurai one is a little weird with its base. It curls up a little and it's a little top heavy so it falls over a lot. And the spear that the water elemental spirit is holding is pretty cool. It is like a, an historical weapon. But none of them are as interesting to me as the earth spirit or the earth elemental the three humanoid ones just look like a very flavored myrmidon to me but they also kind of look a bit weaker the earth elemental one looks like he could actually pack a punch and really wallop someone and uh you know he's also like a bigger mini there's it's always good to get a few bigger money minis in a set. We've had plenty of you know, humanoid sized minis. And yes, the other three all just look like special samurai. And this guy, he does kind of remind me of like a Sandman type figure, but he's very much doing his own thing. And I love him for it. We're playing with the big boys now. Here we have a couple of Oni. These are Japanese ogres, but they also are represented in 5e and other fantasy settings. The first one is probably my favorite of the two. Apparently there's an old Japanese expression that reads Oni with an iron club, which basically means to say that one is invincible or undefeatable. I don't know about undefeatable, but the 5e Oni are pretty gnarly though their stat block does not include them with a club, but instead a glaive. But hey, that just means this one can be used for variety. I really love this guy's stance and his footwear. You actually glue it in through the little slots on the shoes there, which are a very traditional style of shoe. This other guy is a bit more taller, I guess a bit more demonic looking. So the Oni are supposed to be demon ogres. Instead of just a plain club, he has one with a bladed staff. He still has the same wood ball necklace around his neck to sort of identify the two as being similar creatures. I really like the little design on his pauldron there and the bits of armor he has, as well as the little basket that he's wearing on his back. Who knows what he carries around in there. If those two were the last figures of the set, I'd still be happy, but we have two more. And the penultimate one is this giant Oni. He's got a really nice base. It's decorated with a couple of long lost skeletons. And he's wearing a really neat demon mask which some samurai really did wear, which coincidentally often depicted these Onis. Mostly they wore this for intimidation purposes. I don't know how much more intimidating a giant needs to be, but hey, here it is. The actual Oni elements on this figure are kind of subtle. The horns are actually part of the helmet and I guess if you look at the feet, you can see there are claws there. 
but because it's a bit subtle, you could just use this as a regular giant in armor or perhaps an enlarged PC or NPC. Heck, if you didn't want to use this as Oni, maybe this is some avatar of some god. I really, really enjoy this figure's design, and even though he's doing the dual samurai thing again, which those have got to be some really big katanas. I think in a giant's case, it's probably fine. But we could spend more time on this guy, but there's an even better many coming up. And here it is, the Moon Dragon. What a stunning piece. You've seen the painted version from the box art in the background, but actually seeing this thing up close is something else. I bought all the other dragon add-ons from this Kickstarter, and let me tell you, this thing can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with any of them. And I will be putting it side by side, all the rest of those, in a future video. Now, $50 for just this figure would be a lot, and I really wouldn't have paid that. But, that being said, it is no doubt that this mini is the mini of this box set. The rest are all just the best bonuses you can get. See, it's pretty large. I think this would be a huge, maybe not gargantuan, but very huge size creature. It comes on this ruined stone statue head, which if you choose not to glue the dragon to, it will give you a nice terrain piece, although there is a very big uh, line in it that's clearly meant for the dragon to slot in. This is a really unique figure. It's unlike anything else in Reaper's collection or this Kickstarter. And frankly, I think Reaper's outdone themselves with this one. If you need a Japanese inspired or even Chinese inspired dragon or hey, you just want to throw a really cool looking Falcor into your game. I would definitely pick up this dragon, hopefully alongside this set. But that's going to do it for the Daimyo expansion set. Did you have a favorite mini? It's pretty clear I liked a dragon, but I'm a big fan of Let me know which was your favorite, along with anything else you thought about this expansion in the comments down below. And remember, if you want to pick up this set or any of the other sets from the Bones 5 Kickstarter before you have to wait for the retail slog, do not hesitate. The Bones 5.5 Pledge Manager is closing soon, and supplies are limited. You can find more info at reapermini.com or pm.reapermini.com, or scan the QR code at the start of the video. Links will be provided in the description. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you saw today, feel free to leave a like and subscribe. It really helps my channel and it means a lot for a novice introvert like myself these videos aren't easy to make and get out there so any support goes a long way thanks again for watching have a good one let's go paint some minis oh and in case you're wondering this set scored a 10.3 or a 10 out of 12.